All right, my uh, high voltage pulsar has now been turned into a ham radio. <laughs> So this is an old version of this product. Uh, there's been many upgrades to it uh, since then. This is the version two. It's the U-Bit, U-Bitx, U-B-I-T-X version four. Um, and um, so I have it in the box now. Uh, have the uh, uh, display. This is a rotary knob, volume. Uh, these here for microphone, earphone and microphone earphone and and microphone earphone I don't remember now. Um, and then the on off switch with an led um, so yeah uh, the design of this thing is that the arduino is the radio and it's going to be creating a lot of the signals as well so it's going to run on several clocks so the first if the uh, frequencies come in and the first IF is at 45 megahertz. Um, now, if you're designing a uh, product like this, you're going to find what type of things can you get off the shelf cheap, probably. Um, so they found these little um, filters, a little crystal filter that's 45 megahertz, a little three pin device. So the, so the first IF is going to be at 45 megahertz. And then the second IF, which is uh, the uh, single sideband filter, uh, is this 12 megahertz 8 crystal filter down here. Um, then it has switching for four bands. Um, so yeah, so it needs a several clocks. It needs one clock to get you to 45, one clock to get you to from 45 to 12, and then one clock to get you from 12 down. Okay. So there's going to be one clock that is, let's say this is, uh, let's say we have it on uh, uh, 10 megahertz. Then we need uh, 55 megahertz, because uh, 55 minus 10 is 45. So we need something like a 50, 50 around the 50s uh, for, for 10, 55 uh, megahertz. I'm butchering that, aren't I? 55 megahertz for, for 10 megahertz. We're going to turn it on here. So let's show you that. So there we go. I don't know if the camera is going to blow this out or not. Probably will. Let me lower it down. Here we go. It says a uh, Ubitix version 4.3, and we will be doing lower side bit, so lower sideband. So this is the uh, uh, frequency here. Okay, so you get that. So let's go back up the top. All right. So I do projects like this not because I'm going to turn them on and use them. I'm going to play with them and then maybe sell it to somebody who will get more use out of it than I am. Um, but there's gonna be several clocks that we can take a look at. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this project was to uh, use the new spectrum analyzer and show you some, uh, show you some signals we can see. So uh, let me rearrange that a bit so we can get the uh, spectrum analyzer on the, on, the, on the camera and we'll look at some signals. Um, so I'm going to be using the spec analyzer with non-contact contact probe. I've showed these before. You can buy a set of these non-contact probes for about 12 bucks on uh, AliExpress or eBay or someplace. Um, but it is a, uh, a little loop and we can go around that little loop and we can kind of sniff the circuit out. Okay. So wherever this thing is next to, we'll be able to see it on the, uh, on the oscilloscope. So, uh, first of all, we're going to sniff over here where the Arduino is, and the Arduino should be giving us three different signals, okay? Uh, they're, they're marked on the schematic clock one, two, and three. Yeah, so let's go here. Uh, let's see, we'll preset. We'll do a stop frequency of, let's say, 75 megahertz. Um, and we will turn the attenuator off because we're not inputting any signals. We're just going to be sniffing. And now we can kind of run around the board and sniff around and oh there you go you can see that we're sniffing so i'm using the little probe and i'm sniffing i'm sniffing over by the connector I'm looking at pin three of the connector of the radino and we can see we're getting a pulse uh over here not a pulse but a, a frequency right we're getting a frequency around 52.2 well that's interesting um all right let me set the front panel frequency to exactly seven megahertz. Okay. Oops. It's a little touchy. There we go. Seven megahertz. And let's go ahead and go to the center. We will zoom in on this. So we can get a better accurate picture of what's going on. And our marker is right at 52. So 52 minus seven is 45. 
And then if I touch the, the uh, knob on the front, you can see that I can tune down and I can tune up. And that's what, right here it's measuring, uh, let's, let's put a number, this is 7.04, and this is 6.965. And then if I put it right at seven, it should be right at 52. And that'll give us 45, right there, oops, right there is seven, close enough, seven. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I was poking, I was poking around down here, right next to the uh, Arduino. I'm gonna poke around here with this 45, 45 megahertz crystal here, okay? Uh, crystal filter. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at that. Um, and so if I go over to the filter, uh, right next to the filter is the signal we've already been looking at, that one that goes back and forth and back and forth, right? Okay, so let's put it exactly at seven again. And I have a seven megahertz signal coming into the radio, okay? And so this should get mixed down to 45, okay? So if I put frequency of 45 megahertz in the center, Okay, and you can see, ah, I do have something at 45 and it's wiggling up and down because it's AM modulated, all right? And I can move I can move it back and forth. So this is what's gonna be going into that filter, okay? So this is what's going into the filter. And let me put it back down to seven megahertz. Now I'm gonna look at the other side of the filter, the output of the filter. The output of the filter is over here and it's been attenuated a little bit, but we can still see it there. Uh, let's see if we can find a better place where the intensity is bigger, maybe right there. Okay, so now if I tune down, it disappears. And if I tune down, if I tune up, it disappears. So we're looking at the filter shape, okay? We could turn on uh, trace max hold, and I'm going to tune down, okay? And then I'm going to tune up, all right? And sometimes it, it skips a beat, but if I just move, move it very slowly, I can kind of fill that in. But anyway, that is the shape of the IF filter. Okay, I'm trying to move it real slow. So that is the shape of our IF filter. And so our IF filter is about, uh, let's see here, our span is 200 kilohertz. So let's just put a marker, let's just do it the hard way. We'll put a marker, uh, we'll come over here, about here, and then we'll put a marker over here. And we can say, ah, it's about uh, 28 kilohertz wide. That's that filter. All right, so we've looked at those two things. Let's turn our trace back on. Okay, okay, we're getting, getting things back again. All right, so um, the next thing we want to take a look at is the um, next clock in the series. So I looked at pin three. Let me go back up to frequency, uh, start at zero, and stop at 75 megahertz. Okay, so our pin three was this uh, around 55 uh, megahertz. I'm going to go to the next one, which is over here. Uh, that frequency there, okay, and uh, let's see here, peak. So that was happening at around, let's see here, let me clear all my markers out. Marker, normal, there we go, around 33 megahertz, okay, so that, that marker, oops, timed out here. All right, so this one is around 33. And 33 is if you take um, 45 megahertz and down convert that to 12, that requires you to have 33 megahertz. So this is the clock that down converts you into 12 megahertz. And then we'll slide over and we should find a 12 megahertz clock somewhere. Uh, where is my, my probe might not be able to pick up 12 megahertz. Let's see. Yeah, my probe, this probe is too small, I think, for 12 megahertz. So let me, 
Let me change my probe. Look at a larger, uh, a lower frequency. And uh, I think, I think this one will be good. It's a, a larger diameter. Can you see that? A larger diameter, so it have a lower, lower resonant frequency. We might be able to see our 12 megahertz better. Um, or not, I don't know. Should be able to see the 12 here somewhere. There's, the, oh, there's, oh, there's those guys. They're kind of bigger too. Okay. Oh, there it is. See that guy way over there? There's some harmonics in here too, because there's mixing products and stuff. But there's our, there's our 12 megahertz. So we'll do a peak, uh, left peak. Uh, next. There we go. Uh, yeah, 12 megahertz. So there's our 12, our 33, and our 45 or 55. So everything is. Everything is in there. So that's a way to use your spectrum analyzer to kind of sniff around, see what's going on. Um, it's hard for me to show everything on camera without setting up two cameras and wasting a lot of my time. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just using this little loop and I'm, I'm looking around over in here uh, for the 45 megahertz stuff. I'm looking in there for the Arduino stuff. And then over here's our 12 megahertz stuff over here. Uh, but anyway, uh, just take your probe. You can't hurt anything because this thing is just, uh, not, it's not making electrical contact with the circuit. You can just kind of kind of run around and kind of run, look around for things. It's a great way to, to troubleshoot circuits also. You can like trace it through, You're like where does it stop, right? Oh, I see it here, but then it doesn't go to here. You know, kind of trace it around the, trace it around the circuit. Anyway, there you go. I just put a little 12 volt uh, power supply in here. I think I, I used this in one of my videos to explain how uh, switching power supplies work. It's just a little 12 volt, uh, one point, let's see, 12 volts at one and a quarter amps. Uh, that's barely enough for this thing, but it's just kind of a placeholder. Uh, I think I think it would probably work. Um, and I put in uh, all of the wiring here and laced it up to make it look nice. Pretty complicated board, fairly complicated circuit. It's uh, it's fairly easy to understand what they were going for, but uh, they did have to pack a lot into this thing. All right, so I'm injecting an AM signal in here, and uh, I'm going to tune into it, and I'm going to change the modulation of my. There's 500 hertz. So it's an AM signal, not a, not a single sideband signal. This thing is set up for lower sideband, but it should be picking it up okay. Um, but there might be a carrier that leaks through upper sideband won't, or lower side, neither sideband will have a carrier that kind of mixes in here. So I don't have an easy way to hook up a single sideband modulation in the setup I've got right now, but I think you can hear it. Um, go back to frequency. There's one kilohertz, 1.5 kilohertz. Anyway, so it is, it is receiving and I can turn off the volume. Um, yeah, uh, looks pretty interesting. It's, uh, I think a nice way to learn, learn how radios work. Uh, uh, it is, I think it's completely open source. So I think you can, uh, it does have a full schematic at least. I don't know about the software. I don't know if the software is completely open source or not, but you can sort of play around with the filters and uh, see how the mixers and stuff work. It's a dual, dual conversion. Uh, you can take a look at all of the low pass filters for, uh, for harmonic suppression and stuff and uh, how that's all accomplished. You can see how the signal is routed added from the output to the input and things. Anyway, it's a good, uh, I think it's a good learning tool.